So now I'm going to try to prove Leibniz rule, which is this rule right here. And I'm going to do it for a special case, a particular case where the limit of integration a and b are both constants. Now, if a and b also varies with respect to t, in this case, for example, then this whole thing gets a lot more complicated and I, I just don't want to deal with that right now. So, but you could, you could go look it up on Wikipedia. I think Wikipedia has the proof for this for all the cases. Anyways, um, so first what we're going to do is we're going to define a function. I'm going to define a function called i, which stands for integral. And it's going to be a function which depends on t. And this will equal to just this integral that's inside. So we're just equal to the integral evaluated from a to b of f of x and t dx. So as you can see here, f of x, f here, is going to be a function that depends on both x and t. But because here you're already integrating it with respect to the x, um, the x would actually disappear after you integrate. And so then the integral only really varies according to t. So now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find the derivative of this function i, which by the way does not stand for current. Um, anyways, so so rather so we're going to use the um, definition of the limit that you um, definition of the integral um, of, of the derivative, sorry, um, that you probably have learned since like high school or whatever. And so definition of limit says that um, the different the derivative of something with respect to t would equal to the limit. Um, I'm going to use the delta t approaching zero uh, method, and it's going to be li that limit of i of t plus delta t minus i of t, all divided by delta t like that. And so now let's try to find out what this bit equal to. So I'm just going to I'm going to keep the limit, right? Obviously, you need to keep the limit. Um, I'm going to move the 1 over delta t outside so we can write it a bit easier, right? So, what's i of t plus delta t? Well, it's just this integral, right? So, rather than having t, we just replace it with delta t. It's simple enough. So, this will just be a to b of f x t plus delta t dx, right? And it's minus i of t, so it's just minus that. So it's minus of a b f x of t dx, like that. So now, because here you have two integrals which are subtracting each other, and they're both integrating between the same limits, and they're both diff um, integrating with respect to the same variable. So now, what I could do is I could just combine these two integrals together, at like this, I could just say limit as t approaches zero. Um, I'm not going to write this one over t because I'm going to put it inside the integral now because delta t is just ultimately constant. And so the integral between from um, from a to b of <clears throat> um, f of x t plus delta t minus f of x of t, which is just this bit here all divided by delta t, which is just this bit outside, which I've taken into the integral here, and dx. Now, as you can see here, look over here. What this is, this is just the derivative of f with respect to t. And we know that's true because this is just, well, the definition of the derivative. Because here we have the limit as delta t approaches zero of the function as t uh, um, plus a bit of delta t minus f at a particular value of t divided by that small change in t. And so ultimately, this is just df dt. And so then, this is just going to be the integral from a to b of df over dt dx. And this is the same as this, which is exactly what we have up here. And so there you go, we have proven that, um, well, that Leibniz rule is true, at least for this particular case.